Hey everybody, welcome to another Psycraft episode. Today I won't work on the bat and squid switch because there's something that came up which needs to be dealt with first. We need to prepare for our next marathon livestream. So we already made two of those before, um, where we in one made a double witcher primitive in 36 hours and then we made another one in 20 hours. The goal for the next livestream marathon is to do one in 18 hours. So at the time this episode airs, could be that we have already done that, um, but I'm always a bit behind with the cycle of the episodes. But anyway, we need to prepare uh, for that livestream marathon, and we need to make a piston bolt in order to reach the location quickly. Um, so the location of the next double witcher perimeter is actually quite close. It's the closest one from spawn. So let's check this out. Um, we need to go to the quarry area. Whoops, I almost get the panic. <laughs> Build this up. Uh, the quarry is there. And the location of the double chip perimeter is behind the quarried area. So let me look it up. It's at minus 200, 1722. It's actually the closest double chip perimeter. XCOM a while ago made a program searching for all of the double chip perimeters and for some reason we didn't use the closest double chip perimeter yet. Okay, what is about to change? God. This area is so huge. Okay, anyway. About 400 blocks more and then we would reach it. Now the problem is that we don't want to have a piston bolt going through the, the yeah, giant perimeter in the nether. Since yeah, it would have some issues, mostly that it would raise the subchunk level, um, which is yeah what we want to avoid. Um, so all of the perimeters, so this is basically we have four perimeters in one, uh, will be used for mob farms, and um, yeah, piston bolt could interfere with stuff in here. So I probably just go around with the piston bolt, and the plan is now, I'm already approaching it, um, to use the purple piston bolt here, which goes to another double witcher perimeter um, for the same line. So basically split it up and make another piston bolt going directly next to the perimeter uh, towards that direction. Then we just make a right turn uh, for the last few blocks. All right. Now, if you head back to the nether perimeter, we need to make some kind of a switch so we can select the destination there. So the idea would be that we add some kind of a yeah, switch here at some of the blocks in order to select the location or destination. So you might remember this. This was our hands-free um, yeah, minecart launching system for the piston bolt. It's quite good, but I would have actually preferred to use buttons now since you can easily uh, attach a wooden and a stone button to the same block and select the destination like this. But yeah, we have to deal with this. So we're probably just going to use a lever instead. And depending um, if it's on or off, we go to selection one or two. I think that's probably what we're going to go for. All right. Um, then we can already use the system, which we used here in order to reduce the amount of lag which is created. So we use comparators here on the outside with single strength one in order to power the pistons. Usually we use repeaters uh, at the other piston bolts. But this time we just want to try it out if it yeah, maybe helps a little bit, and it actually does. So obviously, um, if you use repeaters, then you get single strength 15 here at the redstone dust, um, which is quite laggy. You might notice redstone dust with high single strength is super laggy. That's why I use the comparators here. But we can use the system for the uh, destination selection. So if you want to go to selection uh, destination A, you send single strength 1. And if you want to go to destination B, Send uh, signal strength too, which is also yeah not that laggy. All right, so uh, yeah, where the uh, purple piston bolt meets about the corner of the perimeter, we make our railroad switch, where we send the minecart in one of the two directions. So we probably need to break up the piston bolt um, and then just make a normal rail line, maybe either power a, a curved rail or not, in order to just go to one of the two directions, and then we send the minecart on the piston bolt line again. While the first part was quite easy, the actual railroad switch was a bit tricky. I spent about 30 minutes on it, but I think I got a working system. So the tricky part was just to decide 
uh, where to place what. And I think I got a working system now. Um, so the idea is here the signal strength one or two travels. If we get signal strength uh, two, then uh, we just decrease the signal strength by one more. So it's still one and it can go through the uh, repeater line. If you only have signal strength one, then since we subtract one, um, it's zero and the signal is just lost. Okay, depending what we select, this curved rail goes in either uh, one of those two directions and you just need to get the timing right. All right, um, we can also try it out. So I already made the transitions for the piston bolts, so the straight part works and the diagonal part should also work. All right, at least that is solved. Now the only part that's really left to do is um, get the timings right with those repeaters here that we activate the rail just in the right moment. So I set the signal strength to two, so we should go uh, or continue go diagonally. All right, and yeah, that's why I love testing in creative. We can just go faster or slower in order to see what's going on with the timings. Maybe let's do it normal, and once we approach the switch, slow it down, get out of the minecart if possible. Ah, uh, come on. Okay, here we can see. So now I set the repeaters on full delay. Let's see if this is okay, but it seems like we actually need less delay. All right, I'll guess the system won't work because the minecart is already going straight. Okay, um, just to adjust the repeater delay, it seems like. All right, I'm quite confident that the repeater delay is correct this time. And there we are. Let's see if we go diagonally. Yep. All right, it seems to work fine. So the only thing that's left to do is make a seam for the piston bolt and then we also uh, need to make the yeah, return so the once we go in the other direction basically coming from there going this way uh, we need to get on the other side and put the minecart on top of the yeah purple line so I'll probably just go over the whole thing let the minecart drop down and then activate uh, the pistons from the side so that that's the plan all right, so I got a working version, but it's extremely ugly. So we just drive up a ramp here and let the minecart drop down. Additionally, we take an output uh, from the detector rail in order to power the pistons. And yeah, powering the pistons is also horrible because there's really no way to access the pistons here um, in the middle. So what I'm doing now, I'm, I'm going in from the bottom. Um, yeah, as you can see, this doesn't, yeah. It's just awful, <laughs> but I really don't have a better idea how to do this. <laughs> um, you can probably also maybe take the output already here at the bottom and then we could just, I don't know, stay below the whole thing. So we don't need to do this. But then we need to add a lot of delay additionally. Um, actually, that's probably what I'm going to do because this is awful. <laughs> All right, let's try that instead. All right, at least the redstone is now below the piston bolt, but I don't think there's a way around the ramp. We could kind of make a yeah, minecart elevator and then even maybe another piston bolt here at the top, a short one, just to make it a little bit faster. But yeah, I don't think there's really a point in trying to save a second somehow. All right, let's try this out. See if the timings work at least. Uh, way too early. Where's the minecart even? Uh, okay. <laughs> Did I miss it? No, it actually worked. Oh, nice. All right, so I also made a nice design for the piston bolt. Pella thought it would be a good idea to make a witch uh, drop seamed piston bolt. Uh, so the idea is to use a lot of glowstone with this one since the witches obviously drop glowstone dust. All right, so I try to go with a lot of yellow with this one. I'll try to put in a glowstone wherever possible. I actually don't like glowstone at all. I think it's one of the ugliest blocks in a game, um, but I guess it's okay uh, with the whole thing. Um, yeah, so I also made a little encasing here for the top part of the 
rail line and a minecart would later drop down. And there's one thing I'm not quite sure if it's a good idea, so it's probably not a good idea, is to use bats in order to make the pistons and the full blocks that are powered spawn proof. Usually we mostly use carpet for that, or we could also use flower pots. Um, there's really just a limited amount of blocks that would work. And we've never used bats before, because obviously you need to, uh, they're not stackable, so you need to craft them all the time. And also if you try to sleep in them, then you get a problem. Um, but since you're riding a piston bolt anyway, and you're mostly AFK or not paying attention, so why would you click on a bat? That's why I thought it could be a nice idea, but then I remembered that in 1.13 they changed something with the bats, and I'm not quite sure if this would be a problem. So at the moment, it's not an issue. As you can see, I can power the piston, and the bat would still stay on top. But I'm not sure if that's still the case in 1.13, so we maybe should take a look at that. I switched to the snapshot server, so here you can see blue eyes, but unfortunately the bats pop off. Now this is one of those completely unnecessary changes that actually just remove content and make the game less interesting. I really don't get why they do this so often. So this would be the carpet version, but I think it's a bit boring since we've done it a lot before. I'll take a look what other the options we have. Golden pressure plates also spawn proof. I think this is a really good choice just to do something else. And I'm not sure what to put on top of the piston so that pressure plate uh, would pop off. So that's not an option. Uh, so we could use glass panes instead. But I think it looks a bit better if it's flat. So we could also maybe use carpet for just for the pistons. Mm. Or we use the trapdoors. Not quite sure. I, I like the trapdoors a little bit better this time. I think we'll just go for the trapdoors. And we're back in the survival world. I already built up the schematic that I took from the creative world. So we got exactly the same now. I've also been testing the system already. Had some issues with it because for some reason in the back there was a repeater placed instead of a comparator and it took me quite a while until I figured this out. Uh, yeah, but anyway, it's working now. And yeah, again, time for the grindy part more or less. So we need to build up the piston bolt, about 1k in that direction, then we go over to, uh, diagonally, maybe for about 400 blocks, then maybe about three or 400 blocks again uh, straight with the piston bolt. Then we arrive at the new location of the double shot. Alright, so Ori already did some preparation work. He dug a tunnel. As you can see here, this was flattened. And here, dug a tunnel through the netherrack. So that's already done. Um, but now we have to build it up again. So this is gonna be the usual. I think I'm gonna start with the floor first. Then we'll put rails on top. Uh, build the flying machine, the curves, all the rails, and then build the rest. I think I'll make a time lapse of it. Most of the grinding work is done in live streams. We also very often get help from the other side crafters, so we can do those projects a little bit faster. And yeah, if you follow me on Twitch, you probably already know about this piston bolt. All right, I think we're also gonna use one of those live streams in order to make a nice time lapse of the building process.
lucky to make a good time lapse of free play mode of such a huge project uh, since I was moving back and forth in order to place lines of blocks and then obviously you unload chunks and there's a lot of movement going on. Um, uh, it's a bit tricky to get an overview of the whole project, uh, free play mode. Uh, would have been probably better if I would build it up completely, like let's say a slice of 10 blocks and then the next one instead of, whoops, sort of going um, all the way back and forth, but it's definitely more efficient to go back and forth and um, yeah, building this just to have it, not for the time lapse. All right, there's also some progress we've done which wasn't shown in time lapse. Uh, Panic built up the first tunnel here. I think this is completely done except spawn proofing the pistons and blocks here. And yeah, I already built up the second rail curve for the straight part, and we had the rail curve running for the diagonal part already, and also placed down the yellow concrete here in between the diagonal piston bolts. Alright, so a lot of progress, but I think we're not even done halfway. Uh, there's still a lot to do, uh, but that should be it for the piston bolt project in this episode. And there's another thing I want to show in this episode, which is our passive mob switch. So this is very similar to our hostile mob switch with the shulkers over there. Just this time we're using passive mobs in order to yeah, cover another mob cap. So in total there are four different mob caps, passive mobs, hostile mobs, ambient mobs and water mobs. And yeah, the plan is to get a mob switch for each different mob type on the server, just mostly to have it. Um, so we're using pigs here, not chickens, which would have been easier to get because uh, the, you know, the chickens lay eggs and then we would have the extra items, which is um, yeah, not as great as having the pigs. Uh, thinking about the lack of the extra items. Um, yeah, so it was definitely a lot of work to get those pigs in there. Efforts to build up the complete thing and took him I think, quite a few hours. <laughs> so I had to get a pair of pigs here, start breeding them putting them in each different chamber was yeah, quite a lot of work and it's mostly to have it. So where it would be useful is very few cases where we don't have a um, full render distance perimeter. So right now we always make a uh, 500 by 500 perimeter in order to don't have any, any animals loaded anyway. But before that we had, for example, the slime farm perimeter or the witch farm perimeter, which was just about 300 by 300. And technically you could have um, yeah, pigs loaded there or other animals um, outside of the actual perimeter area, contributing a bit to the lag. And of course kid could kill all the animals outside of the perimeter, but then they still would respawn a little bit unless you remove all the grass blocks. So you could have 10 or 15 again. And if you have a passive mob switch in the spawn chunks, then yeah, no new pigs would respawn it all and then you can get away with just killing all of the pigs or animals. Alright, so there's a little improvement for the server. Not too useful, you don't need to do it in a single player world, but it's definitely nice to have. Alright, that's it for this episode. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye bye.